Good day, mate. Good day, <laughs> How are you doing? mate. I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I can't do yeah. a Scottish accent very well. Um, no, you can. That's that's excellent. No, I can. You've, I can. You, you've no. got you've got Scottish blood in you, anyway. Yes, I do. I do. I do. My grandparent or my grandpa, um, my dad's father's family all came out from Scotland, and when he was a young boy, a wee lad, is that what you would say? And um, and then actually on my mum's side, actually all my grandparents, I think tracing back except for one, one line. The rest of them are all Scottish. So there you go. And it's it's quite funny because when I was looking at where the Lumsdens are from, and then when I was looking at where you're from in Tuma, the it's really quite uh, quite similar areas. Ah, uh, really? I don't know if there's a connection why they, they settled there, if they found <laughs> somewhere that looked like home or what, but it well, was, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. Apparently, apparently the saying goes that because they lived in some mountains about two hours south and there was big rocks on this mountain called Mount Buffalo and they did say that it was, it reminded them of home of Scotland, so they did like it there, that's why. Just to introduce you to our followers, yes. um, if you could just give a little bit of a background about yourself and uh, yeah, and, and yeah. where you grew up and yeah. So uh, my name is Fanny, obviously, Lunsden. Um It's not the name my mum gave me. It is a nickname that I got at uni, but it, it has been proved useful as a nickname because it sells me a lot of t-shirts. They all say, I love Fanny um, and hats and... <laughs> Yes, it means what you think it means, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I grew up on a farm in western New South Wales, uh, kind of red dirt, kind of country, cropping sheep, and played a lot of music. My whole family plays music on all sides, like from opera singers to musical theatre performers to, you know, bush poets to, yeah, lots of show ponies in my family um, and classical music. And so I grew up playing music and... Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I went away and did a uni degree, went away and travelled, did all that kind of stuff, and then, then kind of fell into music and have, I've just put out our third album, and um, very, uh, we run, my husband and I run all our own business, so we have um, a record label and a um, production company and a, um, a touring brand called the Country Hills Tour, and self-managed, so, and yeah, so we live in Tuma. In, uh, which is kind of in the mountains of New South Wales, not the Blue Mountains. It's about six hours from Sydney, six hours from Melbourne. Um, and we live here with our son, Walter, who's two. And yeah, it's kind of us, really. The logistics of like being a, a touring musician like, and a really successful one, but in a really rural area, like yeah. how... How do you find the challenges of that? You know, because it'd be quite easy to want to to live in the in the city, Sydney, or or somewhere. But yeah. Look, when we I used to live, I lived in the city for about six years. I lived in Sydney. Um, it's where I met Dan. It's where I met a lot of my band. It's where I kind of got to know what the industry even was. I had no idea really what it was before that. Um, I didn't know how to plug a guitar in. Like I didn't know what a DI was. Like I really, I really like knew nothing. And so I lived in the city for a little while. Um, but we, since we moved, we moved out in 2015, um, and have kind of been traveling around and living out regionally ever since. And I think, um, there are definitely challenges, like we have to drive a lot more, you know, but you, you just get better at compressing everything. So like, we'll just try and get all of our press put into a couple of days and then we'll go to the city and we'll just, you know, we'll just do it then. Um, we spend... We actually found it more frustrating touring and coming back into the city the way that we tour because we have, um, you know, we, we are touring in places that don't have, um, you know, PAs and like gear and everything. We're playing in halls all over, like little places all over the place. And so we have to take everything with us. And so we then would leave the city, you know, and then get out and then come back in at like two in the morning on a one way street and like having to unload all this gear all the time and then paying for parking and then getting a parking ticket. And then, you know, it was easier just to drive up to the farm and pull up and get out and walk inside. <laughs> um, so we kind of found that easier. And none of us in, in our band are, are from Glasgow. Um, we're all from kind of rural areas and, uh, you know, you really feel the draw. <laughs> and sometimes you think, yeah. oh, really difficult to, to be really difficult to live up the road um, in the highlands 
because uh, you, you know you're we're, we're really quite far away but actually we're only two and a half hours away from Glasgow it's, it's nothing <laughs> and when you can when you, I know exactly and when you compare it to the the effort and the lengths that you go to 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 make touring work is uh, yeah it really it puts it in perspective Sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at you like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're quite right. You kind of just touched on the um, your your kind of travelling show, and it's the Country Halls tour. Mm. Yes. I, I I just thought this was absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, could you just tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So the Country Halls tour um, is essentially a um, kind of just a big show that we take out um, to halls, little like community halls. You have them too, I assume, like your town halls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, most most villages have, have got a, a got village one. hall or a town hall. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same kind of thing. Ours are very pretty spread apart, but um, they're all over the country. And um, basically, we take a full show, like a full band, full production, like deck the place out um, uh, in a halls wherever they are. So it started in 2012 when um, accidentally, really, we went out and did three halls um, in Western New South Wales where I'd grown up um, as a fundraiser for an organization um, and I just decided to do it and I didn't know what I was doing at all. <laughs> no idea. Um, I think my hair nearly fell out when I by the end of it because I was so stressed but um, it was really wonderful. Everyone was really generous and great and everyone came up to us and told us about their hall that one weekend and they were like come to this hall or have you seen the blah 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 hall? Come to this hall. And I uh, I was like, oh, okay, and we went the next year, did it again, just did a, just three or something or five. Anyway, fast forward eight years later, we've done over 130 halls all over Australia. We had nearly 80 apply for next year, um, but they're so fun because they're the whole community basically. It's a very like family friendly, everyone in um, kind of kind of vibe, like kids to grandparents and like it's fully it's all ticketed and the whole thing's run very specifically these days like we've worked out what works um and i i finally got an assistant now that helps me run them um which has changed my life but um it's yeah it's it's a lot of fun and um you guys will have to come on one come out and come on one oh, we would love to gigs in small communities and rural communities and especially in small halls are, are basically what we live for as a, as a band um, like don't don't get me wrong, we love playing at festivals and 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 in kind of bigger theatres and mm. things. But you know the real energy. I mean, our our best our best shows are in village halls. It's just something yeah. about that vibe and everyone feeling like they're just like that nothing else is going on in the world. It's just like everyone is really in it and it. You know the sound bounces off the walls everywhere and there's people kind of just chaotic and it's um it's just vibey and fun and i yeah i, I really love it as well we um that we've played in halls like because in australia they're very like they're everywhere and often out really kind of um you know when you get out west there's kind of like hundreds of kilometers of just like farms and properties and and like and when i say farms like you know there's you know, maybe not a, there's a house every 10 to 20 kilometers or more. Um, and, and then you'll be driving for hundreds of kilometers and there won't be a building and then there'll just be a, a hall and it'll just be like, it'll be like a tin shed, but it's a hall. <laughs> and, um, and we've done a bunch of those and you're like, I, I, I don't know where you all came from, <laughs> but people just come from everywhere and it's just like such fun. And I love it when people come to us and tell us like, I met my wife here in the 38 at the blah 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 dance or you know they they've all got a beautiful story or something or you know I had a fight and knocked that guy's teeth out here last week you know like you know it's just <laughs> yeah I was gonna say it must be really rewarding and but f full on but rewarding <laughs> yeah yeah then chuck a baby into it which I'm sure you understand <laughs> like <phew. laughs> we played little shows in people's backyards all over Australia same kind of thing but like a country hall's but smaller and um but we did it with literally a newborn baby <laughs> and so i would just like feed him and then i would um get him ready and then i just like have teed up somebody in the audience that looks like they have experience with a child usually i'm like go for grandmas because i'm like you know what they've raised one generation they've raised two maybe they've even raised three so i'm like yeah find the granny <laughs> give her the baby 
<laughs> get on the stage and then um, we get through about half the set and then maybe he'll start crying a little bit. And so then my brother would then get him because my brother just sings in the band. And so he would, we put the little earmuffs. I sell them as merch. They're called mini muffs, mini muffs by Fanny, baby earmuffs. I'll send you some. Nice, um, so then my brother would hold him on stage and he'd fall asleep as we were playing. And so, yeah, we did that for the first six months um, of his life. And look, that makes it sound really easy. That was horrible. <laughs> Amazing gigs, wonderful moments, but like, you know, there's a lot of details that aren't so um, shiny when you're traveling with a newborn, like pumping milk in the back of the car and then he's screaming and I'm trying to feed him in one hand, doing my makeup as we're driving and then um, he's crying, I'm crying, like, <laughs> like we're late, like, ah! <laughs> This is I'm going I'm going off on a tangent here, but have you have you heard of Iron Brew? Yeah, I yeah I had it. I went to Scotland when I was eighteen. Um, like I tra went to Canada actually, and then anyway, we don't need to talk about that. I had a trip. I've been there. I tried it. <laughs> You're gonna have to do some convincing. Well, I mean, I, I'm not actually that big a fan of Iron Brew to be honest. Um, oh, good, but. Yeah, but but they but they do have some of the best marketing going, and uh, you you'd I'll be particularly interested in one that was uh, yeah the the Fanny advert, so it was all about oh. the, the baby. I need to team up with them. Finance in place for you there, I'm sure. Well, I had I had I had loads of fun listening to listening to to your stuff, and uh, one of the tracks um, that we're going to play is uh, Fierce. Ah. Yes. That was that was one I picked. Um and is that uh, is that on your is that on Fallow? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. That's on the new record. Yeah, yeah, it's actually our it's our current single at the moment actually. Um that's oh, our radio. Great. So that worked well. Good pick. Ten points yeah, for you. No, <laughs> I, I just Yeah, no, it's it struck it struck a, a chord for a, a number of reasons that, that song with me. Um but one 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 connection that I just thought uh, was was quite interesting was uh, at the start of your video you've got the women's land army, uh, yes, yeah, working the fields and during the war and uh, so the village that I grew up in Carbridge, uh, we're surrounded by Caledonian pine forest, so it's the kind of last remnants of the the great Cali pine forest that used to cover Scotland, and during the Second World War the women's land army came in and they were tasked tasked with uh, felling the timber and milling it for for the war effort and they, they were referred to as uh, timber girls oh that's so great you know what? i actually think and, uh, i um i think i might have seen a little bit of footage of this on youtube um when i was doing my research for our clip um but yeah it looks amazing yeah oh i, I mean like the <laughs> The physical demands of that work are inc incredible. You know, I mean, they yeah. were felling trees, hauling them through the forest, and oh, uh, un unbelievable. And, and they off. weren't recognised for for years. I think I, I don't actually uh, know exactly when it was, but event eventually uh, they were given uh, little wooden uh, medals to ah. for 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 their effort in the war. But I mean, you're talking fifty years later. It's uh, their, you know, their efforts were just really overlooked, which is crazy. Wild, isn't it? I am um, part of um, doing the clip for this song. Um, yeah, we obviously featured the Women's Land Army and uh, some footage from the National Archive that we were able to use. And then I went, like was referencing our current Women's Land Army, which is, um, you know, a lot of our, I think 49% of our produce is actually produced by women farmers. Um, however, it wasn't until 1994 in Australia that women could legally write on a document that their occupation was a farmer, not a farmer's wife or a farmer's help or a hand. 94? <laughs> anyway, I was like, well, that's astounding. Um, so I wanted to like, you know, a little nod to these women. So there's a lot of women around here that are farmers, obviously, and a lot of them have been um, out you know, rebuilding fences because we had big fires through here in the summer. And um, so we went out and filmed women around here as the modern land army. And, um, you know, also that 
you know, it also included my mum and included my sisters and um, a lot of my family and stuff. So, yeah, I think those women's land army were a real, um, like obviously it was a massive surge in women in agriculture. And I think that was pretty cool to acknowledge. Oh, it's a really special song and the, and the video is amazing. So I'd urge everyone to go and watch that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, the, the other... No, no worries. The, the the other song that I was that I was kind of drawn to was the the real men don't cry. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, another another clip. Those clips are kind of like our. They're like a, uh, almost sister brother clip. Um, we we did them in the same style on purpose. Actually, they're kind of an answer to each other, and that's interesting that you were linked between the two, but. Yeah, Real Men Don't Cry, War and Pride is a, a song that I wrote um, a few years ago. Dan and I were actually just the two of us playing shows all around Australia in our little van. And um, we lived on the road for most of a year and just went like everywhere. And um, I wrote this song. I kind of been wanting to write something about this for a while because I grew up on a, you know, I grew up on a property and on a farm and grew up in a rural community where men always had kind of stiff upper lip and it was always, it was like encouraged that you don't talk about how you really feel. You know, you, you gotta be, yeah, you gotta just, you'll be right. Yeah. You'll be tough. You know, you know, like everyone kind of, and it was like this weird mentality that obviously has had a horrendous toll on um, everybody, including like just everybody. And so I just, I don't know. I just, I really wanted to talk about the fact that pride often stops you telling people that you love them, not even saying might not even be necessarily directly linked to mental health. It just, it kind of puts a block on things. And, and I wanted to kind of just discuss this and um, yeah, it was great because we got to sing it, you know, we sing it in halls and to rural communities and, you know, I don't dwell on it too much, but I like to have that moment in the show where we acknowledge it and, you know, acknowledge that it's okay to be not okay and kind of have that moment. And um, yeah, it was, it's been really um, amazing. Actually, it's been quite a incredible experience, like sharing that song and the clip, especially we've had so much incredible feedback. Back to you. Sorry. <laughs> you have to edit no, that no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. No, 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 it's all good. Um, just, I was just going to pick up on what you were, what you were saying and, and, about that, you know, you make it part of the show, but you don't dwell on it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I noticed that in the in the video um, that that we've shared with our folk, um, the the mountain your your documentary. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a really interesting process, like dealing with such a massive thing. The fires were really intense here, and um, for some context, for those of you like we had pretty much a, a lot of Australia was burning in the summer and um, where we live, we live um, in the mountains and a pretty much three very big fires kind of joined right here, um, making like a 600,000 hectare mega fire. Um, and they all, yeah, all three kind of joined right here. So it was a pretty intense, like three, well, it was 50 days of fires, but kind of three weeks of fire fronts and 26 days without power. and. Um, yeah, it was a pretty wild experience. So it's been an interesting kind of year because then this, my album came out and it was very directed, directly linked to this area and the mountains. And, and I, I'd, I felt like I had to acknowledge it, but I really was careful in how I did that because, you know, I don't want to, there's a, there's a fine line between like exploiting <laughs> and, and kind of, you know, acknowledging and you, and you have to really, I feel like I have to tread that line really carefully and I didn't want to. I didn't want to um, use it for the wrong reasons. And so, uh, yeah, I think that it needs to be, have a hopeful and optimistic kind of uh, overall feeling to it because, you know, we all have to get along with it. We just got to get on and that's just the way life is, so. We were actually in, in Australia at the very start of the ah, year. Were you? Um, yeah, we were in Sydney uh, and the, yeah, the smoke, the smoke was cr crazy over Sydney. We were there for Burns Day, uh, Rabbi Burns Night yeah. in, in Sydney. And uh, we didn't we didn't know if it was right us going all that way for such a short time, given the, the state that the, the country was in. I you think know, it would have been. The... I think I think it would have been very appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we actually we've, we've got a, we've we brought out a 
15 year old bottle of whiskey to celebrate our 15th anniversary. So we, we auctioned off a bottle uh, for the... Ah! For the... Uh, for, that's for, amazing. Uh, Australian Red Cross, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> wow. That was, that was all we felt we could really do. But, um, that's very generous yeah, no, of it's... Oh, I was going to just say, like, some... There's an interesting fact that you that you popped up in our uh, Dropbox. Yeah. Oh yeah, what is it? That you have the world record <laughs> for the longest distance rollerblading by four people in 24 hours. Honestly, I can't even tell you how little skill I have as a rollerblader. Like, I don't know how I have this. Look, it was the. It's not contested. The whole thing. We were the first person, like, I think if somebody else went and tried to break it, they'd do it straight away. So it's the longest distance rollerbladed by four people in 24 hours. When I was at, I went to uni and I studied rural science, actually, which is like agriculture. And um, I was just in this college and we went, they were doing a fundraiser and um, I, was, I was particularly fit at this point in my life and not now, was then. And I was like, oh, rollerblade. <laughs> For 24 hours and uh, you did yeah so I think 300 and something kilometers <laughs> there might be some people inspired to have a go at your record uh, after watching this interview yeah go for it <laughs> I won't <laughs> I reckon you could crack it <laughs> uh, Fanny listen that th thanks so much for for uh, for for ha having our interview with us ah it's, thank uh, you Oh, it's been great. I, I know it's late at night there and stuff, uh, but uh, but really appreciate Thanks. your time and uh, yeah, you're amazing Thanks. and it's been great to speak to you. Uh, thanks so much um, and we cannot wait to get to Scotland actually. We were trying to plan to come over this year in September but clearly not happening but um, we will make it as, over as soon as we can because we, you know, we, we're, we're ready. We're ready to have a good time. We reckon, we reckon the Scots will have a good time. I actually, I've got some, uh, I've got some Australian whiskey in the cupboard through there, but ah. it's, uh, it's midday here, so I just, I thought it was a bit early <laughs> to have a drop. Otherwise, I would have uh, <laughs> toasted you. <laughs> I'll do it for you then. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> cheers, Fanny. Okay, we'll speak to you soon.